All right, so now we're going to do cyclic alkenes. Um, and uh, this follows the same rules as the stuff from above, um, except for now that we're in a cyclic system, um, we don't really need to specify the position of the alkene um, as like blank dash en uh, because it's just uh, expected that you're going to number the first position of the alkene as number one. So uh, the ring, wherever the first position of the alkene is, is going to be made number one. Um, so here is the same molecule twice, um, and I'm going to number it uh, with one of the positions of the alkene is one, and then we'll kind of think about which one is better. So, um, so I could either number this one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So in both of these cases, um, one of the two positions of the alkene is number one, uh, but one of these is correct and the other is not correct. Um, so to figure that out, you would go back to your old naming rules, and uh, one of the rules was we want the, if, if all things are equal, we want to have the lowest number possible for our substituents. Um, in this case, our only substituent is a methyl group. And if we number from this alkene position, that substituent is position four. But if we number from this position as number one and we number counterclockwise, uh, that position is number five. Um, so uh, we would go with the one that has it as position four because four is a lower number than five. Um, so that, that, that should make sense based on all of our previous um, naming experience. Um, one thing also to note is that position one always has to be followed by the second of the two alkene positions. So uh, we can't number, so this is bad. Uh, we also can't number like this, one, two, three, because um, the person that is trying to understand what you're naming is going to assume that the, if, if, if number, if you say, if it's a cycloalkene and uh, you, you say one, they're assuming that the alkene is between positions one and two. Um, but if you said three methyl cyclohexene, um, they're going to be expecting that the structure would look like that. Because um, they would expect that you would say one, two, three, giving your alkene both positions one and two. Um, so uh, that would not be the way to number. Um, if it was this molecule, then, then that would be correct. So 3-methylcyclohexene would be correct for that. So this is correct naming. Um, but that molecule is not that molecule. Okay, so this is, why, this is the, the numbering that we have to do around the ring. Uh, we never have to specify hex one ene because it's assumed that position one is where the alkene is on the ring. Um, so the only other thing that we have to do is determine R and S around the ring. Um, so is this a stereocenter? Well, um, we have a methyl group, an H. Those are two different things. We have a CH2. That's the same as this CH2. We have a CH2. That is different than this CH. And um, alkenes get priority over um, alkanes, so this is going to be priority one, priority two, and priority three. So um, we're going counterclockwise, so this is going to be S. Um, so I'm putting that all together. This is going to be S, four methyl, four methyl, um, cyclo, hex, ene. So S4-methylcyclohexene is what this one would be named. Um, so that's naming. Uh, we know how to name um, alkenes that are disubstituted and acyclic um, cis and trans. We don't ever have to do cis and trans with um, these smaller rings because um, it's always cis. So that's why that was left off of this. Um, on Wednesday's lecture, at the start, we're going to figure out a naming system for tri-substituted and tetra-substituted alkenes 
um, because you can have different stereoisomers. Um, so uh, we'll do that on Wednesday, and I will see you guys then. Um, yeah, hope this was helpful, and I'll see you later.